The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronics community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com slash presents. Hi, welcome back to Element 14 Presents. I'm Katie, and in today's episode, we're gonna make a real working Lego camera. Amazing hacks. Inspired designs. Each week, Element 14 Presents brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. So the other day, my son got this Lego kit. And whilst he was building it, I thought, I quite like the look of that camera. I'd like one of those myself, but working. So we're going to see if we can make it real. So for this project, we're going to use a Raspberry Pi. Connected to that, we're going to use the new high quality camera sensor, along with the 16 mil telephoto lens. So then we're also going to want uh, LCD so we can have a look at the preview of our picture from the Pi. We're then going to have um, think about power so we're going to use the LiPo shim and a LiPo battery so that's our power, our view and our lens and sensor. Also going to do a on off button we don't want it on all the time and I'm going to need a button to take the picture. So let's call that a trigger button. We're going to use all those components to make our camera. So I'm going to put the wires on the LCD in our buttons um, so they're ready to solder onto the Pi. So now we've got our two switches and our LCD screen. I'm going to tin the ends out because we're going to solder them directly onto the header of the pie. This is because with a female socket on the header it is just over 19 mil thick and we've only got 15 mil to play with inside our case. If I do the wires directly onto the header pin we should just have enough room to squeeze it inside the casing. Before we put our wires on the Raspberry Pi, we've got the LiPo shim. So that needs to be soldered directly onto the header. So we're going to line that up like that, push it over and then solder that on. And then we can solder the wires to the header over the top. So there's a guide on GitHub for the wiring. So you can go on there and follow that. The easiest way to see what's connected to which pin on the Pi. And then once they're all soldered, they've got heat shrink on the wires and we'll pull that down and shrink it over the header. So before we can program our Pi to be a camera, we need to attach the camera to it. So we've got the high quality camera sensor, which is this board. Now it comes with a C to CS adapter ring. For our 16mm telephoto lens, we need that on. And there is a locking screw here that we can do up with the included screwdriver, which means that the adapter won't come loose like that. So now that's locked on with the adapter we need. We can also make this unit a little smaller by taking off this mount because we don't need the tripod mount because it's going to be fixed inside our case. So now here's our 16mm telephoto lens. So it's got adjustable aperture and a little locking screw and adjustable focus and a locking screw so you don't adjust one when you're trying to adjust the other. We can take the protective cover off and the cover off our sensor. Uh, those together and that's our camera assembled. Now we find the camera connector on the Pi, we slide it in there and then we lock it into place. And now we're ready to program it up to be a camera. So this is the code to go on the Pi. Uh, we're importing 
all the libraries that we need. We're then setting up the location we want our photos to be saved on the Pi. Uh, I'm then setting up a trigger button and battery low, um, which is an input on the Pi from the LiPo shim. Uh, then we're setting up the LCD, which is that chunk. I've then got preview. So if we skip that, when we're in our main while loop, which we'll keep going around after it's done all that, it will enter into preview in mode zero. So that means it will come through here. It will ignore this mode one and load cam uh, the camera in continuous mode, but at um, 240 by 180 resolution because that's enough for the LCD screen. At the moment, this is just going to be showing us the picture of what we're looking at before we take our picture. Uh, it then opens the image that the camera is taking. We are then going to look at that battery low button. So the LiPo shim will pull that pin low if the LiPo battery is low. So if it's looking like it's pressed, it's being pulled low, it's going to set red, else it will set black. And then when it's displaying the image, the LCD is a different size to our picture. So it will expand the spare space around the image, which is a border on the bottom of 60 pixels, and it will fill it with the colour of the battery warning. So if the battery is fine, that bar will be black. If the battery is low, it will be red. It's then going to display that on the LCD. And then if it was in mode zero, which is what we entered in, if the trigger button's pressed, it will return one. But if we haven't pressed that yet, it will just keep doing that to keep updating the LCD with what the current picture would be of. If we press the trigger button to take a photo, and it returns with a one here, it will then go down and re-enter preview in mode one, which is here, which means it's doing all the same, but it's setting the camera zoom to the very center of the screen. So this will show us on the LCD, the very middle of what we're looking at. So because the lens has got to be manually focused, this means you can get a really precise focus on the center. Um, it will still keep displaying the battery warning in the spare border on the LCD um, and it will keep showing us that until the trigger button is then released. So we're in mode one this time and the trigger button's been released and then it will return with a two, which then means it will come down here, re-enter Pi camera, but as a single capture of full resolution it will then save that image into the save location with a timestamp for the image. So that's the full size save. Then we're resizing it to the lower resolution and adding our border just so it will display a preview for five seconds so you can see what photo you took and what's saved on the SD card. Then after that, it will come back around and go back into normal preview mode zero and show us what we're looking at for our next picture. Hi, my name is James and this is my electronics workbench. Together, we host Workbench Wednesdays. It is a show where I review electronics tools and equipment. Whether you are on a hobbyist budget or trying to equip a professional workstation, we've got you covered. Look for new episodes on Wednesdays and come connect with me at element14.com slash workbench Wednesdays. So here's the original camera design in Leo CAD. So I haven't put the button through the hole and I haven't done the lens assembly on the front, but that's the design. And this is my modified design. So it's got a hole for the wires for the LCD at the back. And on the front, there's a hole for the lens to stick through. We've got two plate thickness bricks added to the bottom and one full height brick thickness added to the top. So I've mostly taken apart the camera. I've left a few bits where it's going straight back on. And these are the new bits we need to add for the modification to give it the extra height. So now I'm gonna build up our modified casing. Mm -hmm. 
So here we have our new modified camera shell. So I've got this, uh, which is Mech Methyl Ethyl Ketone, which is a fluid that will melt Lego. So if we apply a little bit to the surface and another one on the top, it will melt the two bricks together and form an unbreakable bond. So all we do is we take a brick, we add a tiny drop and then we put our other one on top and basically within seconds they are now well and truly joined like that. However this stuff needs to be used in a really well ventilated area so I am going to go outside and do the rest of the camera and I will be back once I've finished gluing it all together. So next I've made myself a little template. This is the size of the sensor that I want to stick out through the Lego. So I'm going to put this on here, draw a line. So this is the Lego that I need to remove to be able to get it through. So I'm going to use a rotary tool to remove that. However, I'm going to need some safety specs a hairband because I've got long hair to tie my hair back and a mask because it pr produces quite a lot of dust. So I finished gluing our pieces together. I've not glued it into one solid camera because I want to be able to get inside to take the batteries out, change the SD card and stuff, um, do any upgrades in the future. But I also didn't want it to, if it got knocked to go into a hundred pieces to pick up. So I've glued it into separate little sections uh, which I can then piece together um, and take apart. So the lens through the front, the LCD through the hole in the back, hot glue the trigger button into position under the switch and use some foam to stick the LCD. And here we have it, our Lego camera. So it still looks in keeping with the original design. It's got this extra height added, but it's a nice size and shape to hold. The lens looks different, it's not Lego, but the lens design was this style of lens, so it still looks in keeping. When we press the on-off switch, it takes a little longer than you would expect for a digital camera, but not an awfully long amount of time, but you probably wouldn't want to grab it to take a really quick snap. So that's on, we use our LCD screen to line up what we want to photograph. We can then press our shutter button and use the focus ring to get it focused on the centre. And then release and we get our photo displayed for five seconds. So because of the manual focusing, it would be quite difficult to photograph something that was moving unless you knew where it was going to be before it got into the position on the shot but it's ideal for some nice landscapes and things like that so I'm going to take it out and about and take some photos of what it can do. And here it is, our real working Lego camera. So we've built our Lego model, we made our modifications to fit the Raspberry Pi inside, made our hole for the lens to protrude, fitted all our electronics inside, and now it's working. So if I was doing it again, I'd find a different way to mount our LCD display. Uh, the edges on display was a bit precarious, but putting the hot melt glue around the outside was a bad idea. So I wouldn't do that again. I'd also put in a mode to put the Pi into so you could do file sharing or upload the pictures to a remote server so I didn't have to take the micro SD card out each time to retrieve the photos. That would be quite handy. So that's all we have time for today. Have you used the HQ camera? Or have you turned a Lego model into something that really worked by adding electronics? Let us know on the Element 14 community at element14.com forward slash presents. 
and we'll see you next time.